My name is Artur, meet Tomek. We'll talk about hyperparameters in predictive modeling. And let's start from the beginning. What are hyperparameters for you? Could you give an example? These are parameters. Hyperparameters control usually control complexity of models. For example, depth of tree, number of neurons in a neural network. And this is the most obvious approach, the first bullet. Um, less obvious hyperparameter is a method of feature selection. For example, number of best features from some filter method, from, for example, um, a variable importance ranking to be taken to build a model. And least obvious are hyperparameters related, for example, to uh, preparation of the data set. To perform PCA, don't perform PCA. Perform scaling, or uh, what's horizon for historical data to aggregate? Should we take data from the last year or two last years? Usually it's not optimized directly, but treating it as a hyperparameter, all, all these parameters as hyperparameters, and using suitable methods, we can optimize much more and deliver much better predictive models. So this is sub subject of our presentation. Um, the standard approach is to tune hyperparameters that control complexity of model. Exactly as I told, number of trees in XGBoost, number of trees in random forest, depth of a tree, number of leaves. Um, and what's important, what we, or rather Tomek, will talk about can be applied not only to uh, predictive models, but to every complicated black box optimization. Um, there are very different analytical tasks. Let's say analytics at, of many speeds. The first one, real time or near real time, zero to five minutes to build a model. I will go through these examples later. The second one, under one hour, several hours and up to 16 hours. And usually computation time doesn't depend on the type of the model, it depends on a strategy of uh, estimation of hyperparameters. This is time consuming and for each of these approaches we can use uh, a slightly different approach to uh, estimation of hyperparameters. Let's go through three cases. Assume that we are an analyst in a um, death collection agency. You know what I mean? A company that buys some bad loans and tries to recover some money. The process looks like this. They um, have a proposal to buy number of such loans. They, um, are, they have a data set with a number of columns with characteristics of these loans. And they need to give price for this package, basing on these predictors. So what they usually do is to find, uh, sorry, not, not this way. What this analyst should do is to prepare pricing and recommendation. What, what's the optimal price we should pay? This price should be low enough to be the best one to win this package, to buy this package, and um, uh, it must be high enough and low, low enough to get some money back from this package and to earn enough. So what is usually done, so-called um, reference population is taken. There are taken from our historical, historical data some uh, loans as similar as possible to our, our sample. And we build a classification model or, or, or a regression model. And usually these analysts play a lot with reference populations. So they need to build models in real time. So one population, one model. Play and analyze. Why do they need to work in real, in real time? They need, usually they have task to prepare this optimal price during one working day. 
so they need to do a, a lot of adjustments and usually this reference sample is different from the sample they are working on. So they analyze and analyze and analyze and they need to build very fast, mm, they need to build predictive models very, very fast. Otherwise, they will be concentrated on building models, not on assessing quality of the results, not on delivering the recommendation to the decision maker. The second approach, under one hour. If you build a predictive model, usually you'd like to know what's potential of your data. What, what predictive power could you squeeze out of this data? So you apply uh, an automatic method and run and see. Usually you need to have something like an upper benchmark and lower benchmark to see what you could achieve using a pretty complicated model and what could you achieve using a simple model. So, in these situations, modelers need to build a model pretty fast, but not in real time. The third one is a couple of hours, when you know that data quality is okay. You don't have false predictors. You build a couple of almost final models. You should to be able to, do, to build them during one working day. And the last approach is to build a final model, this one that will be deployed, and it may take a couple of days, but it's good to start building this model after working day. For example, 4 p.m., give 16 hours and have the model built on the next day. So you have very different tasks in terms of time and usage of these models. And you could think, why don't use just brute force and more computing power? So for some of you, it may be strange, but what I know from my experience with um, corporate environment, it's not obvious. So usually you cannot use cloud computing, even if you have anonymized data. Um, buying even a laptop can take four months. Um, what next? Using Linux may be just not possible. Have you, have you heard about such situations? Okay, I, I can see some people are nodding. They have corporate experience, but some people just are just looking at me. But believe me, that's true in very big companies. And uh, what was maybe, maybe funny, maybe sad for us, making um, predictive modeling, fitting of predictive models on powerful machines in parallel what was not an easy task. So we had a very powerful computer, really very powerful, and to make this model um, preparing the software to build this model in parallel uh, in a way that it uses full computing power was a hard task, a really hard task. So that's all. I wanted to say as an introduction. Next, it's time for Tomek. Tomek, take the floor. Take the floor. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going. Uh, I'm going to show you um, uh, one way to uh, speed up the process so that you can pretty much jump from uh, one uh, of those uh, uh, speed of analytics uh, into the lower. Uh, lower. Does it work? Uh, into the uh, lower bracket, uh, with uh, pretty much uh, not that ma not that um, uh, many additional code. So, uh, how do you usually choose hyperparameters in a typical analytical task? Uh, well, there are some defaults usually. The defaults are usually not that good for our particular tasks. Uh, we can take some advice from internet. For example, uh, if someone, uh, if we observe that our neural network uh, stops learning, uh, we we often see uh, advice on the internet to adjust the learning rate, and uh, upwards, downwards, whatever the uh, whatever the uh, suggester thinks it will be okay. Uh, uh, who heard? Uh, who has heard uh, of uh, grad student optimization? This is a running joke in some circles. Uh, uh, you make a grad student optimization by hiring a bunch of grad students, 
and asking them to uh, pick the uh, hyperparameters for you. The one who picks the best publishes a paper. So they have uh, an incentive. Uh, experts from experience, well, usually we uh, uh, do an analytics, uh, many different, many similar uh, problems one after another, so we can, to some degree, reuse uh, hyperparameters from one task to another. Uh, we can play with manual tuning, bothersome. Uh, there are uh, some standard uh, approaches like grid search, random search, and there is model-based optimization. So, uh, let's start from the basics. What, uh, what is supervised learning? This is, uh, well, this is just an intuition. It doesn't have to be uh, a perfect definition. Uh, we want to have uh, built a predictive model for some relations. So we, we, have, uh, we want to build a model between X and Y, for example. And uh, of course, we want the model to make as little mistakes as, as possible. So we introduce some measure of how good the model is, how, how many errors does it, does it make. And uh, we compare uh, different hyperparameters by comparing the errors uh, that are uh, well generated by uh, those hyperparameters, but there are many, many possible hyperparameters usually, and uh, trying all of the, all of the combinations might be just might just take uh, too much time. So, uh, well, uh, we could try predicting what will be the error if we choose. Hyper param uh, this set of hyperparameters hyper or that set of, hi of hyperparameters. And I don't know if it's just me, but I see uh, similarities between the first line and the fourth line. Is it just me? Because we can actually use certain supervised learning to learn uh, the mapping between hyperparameters and the errors. And this is the idea behind model-based uh, hyperparameter optimization. Uh, so the algorithm rough sketch is, let's say we already have some hyperparameters and their error estimates. Uh, they don't have to be uh, too many of them. A bunch of them will be nice. Uh, we built a model that predicts error from the hyperparameters, then we pick, uh, we observe the model, analyze it, look for some new hyperparameters, which the model says uh, that will be good, better than the current ones. Actually, try that model out of a prob probably a bunch of you know, other hyperparameter sets and add the new result to the learning set so that we can retrain again the model that uh, predicts uh, our errors. Is it simple? So the questions: Why is it, why is it uh, why it isn't that simple? How to get first examples? Well, we have to have uh, some you know, some uh, initial learning uh, set. Uh, usually, just uh, pick a uh, few hyperparameters at random, train, get some initial estimates. Uh, we want to use supervised learning to make supervised learning. So uh, we have to decide on the hyperparameters of the second side, the hyper uh, of the second model. And again, there are some trusted choices. Uh, one trusted choice is Gaussian processes, uh, also called uh, Kriging. If you know what, uh, if you did some geostatistics or something like that, uh, Kriging is a popular method there. Uh, Gaussian processes and, uh, work uh, quite well if you have uh, the hyperparameters that are just numerical. Uh, if you have uh, factors or you know, if you have, uh, let's say, integers, uh, there are some other methods that are also trusted, like uh, tree of Parsons estimators. But usually, you pick some simple methods because you won't have too many data, too much data. If you have, uh, if you will uh, train, for example, 200 uh, models. 200 sets of parameters, that's probably the most you can expect to, to get during a working day, for example. So these models won't be, won't be that large. Uh, 
Okay, let's say we have uh, we already have some uh, supervised model that uh, predicts uh, errors. Uh, how do we pick new uh, hyperparameters? Again, uh, usual uh, idea is to just uh, sample the model at random uh, from the whole space of hyperparameters. Let's say uh, use the model to predict uh, 1,000 uh, hyperparameter sets and pick the one that scores the best. And uh, the last question here, uh, is it sequential only? Uh, you can see that the, the process looks uh, uh, pretty much sequential, so that uh, in theory you, you could all only test uh, one uh, model at a time. Uh, in practice, you can actually sample from the model multiple hyperparameter sets and parallelize it. However, it's a trade-off because uh, uh, you spend more computational time, but the sampled hyperparameters are from a uh, weaker uh, predictive model, so they might be not as well estimated as uh, they could be in a sequential model, so it's a trade-off. Uh, so, do I have to code it by myself? Fortunately not, there are already several libraries that are doing this pretty much from, uh, out of the box. So uh, there is a uh, Spearmint, uh, which is, uh, this one uh, was one of the first uh, I heard of. Uh, it uses Gaussian processes plus lots of uh, uh, tweaking inside so that it works uh, better for hyperparameter selection. Uh, for example, it rescales the imp in inputs based uh, again on the model. So um, uh, it can uh, fit uh, the, uh, the errors much better than just plain Gaussian process. Uh, Hyperopt is my current favorite uh, in, in, in the Python world. Uh, it allows you, for example, to denote that some hyperparameters uh, should be estimated separately uh, if uh, uh, some major parameter changes. For example, uh, in XGBoost it is usually uh, suggested to uh, tune gamma uh, for each max def separately, and in Hyperopt you can specify that. Uh, uh, in the R world there is an MLR MBO, which is a pretty new library but uh, already quite solid. Uh, there are lots and lots of other tools, uh, Smack is I think in Java, uh, Moe is I think in MATLAB, I'm, I'm not sure, and there are cloud-based uh, systems available. So. Uh, these systems are pretty much, uh, 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 you define the task, uh, they send you a, a set of hyperparameters to test, uh, you send them the error rate, and they again send you another hyperparameter set to test, uh, so that you don't have to set up uh, even the machinery to, uh, to analyze uh, the data. I've used one of them, uh, it was a quite good exp ex experience. So, some codes. Uh, do you know what's uh, scikit-learn? You, you probably know, given that this is a Python conference. Uh, usually, uh, instead of this line, you have a definition of a, a specific model, like uh, EasyBoost or SVM, etc. Uh, Hyperop comes with uh, a, a very easy to use uh, wrapper that uh, actually just uh, try several models at once. You don't even have to specify what are the you know, parameters to optimize. Uh, it comes uh, with the right defaults. And uh, these four lines are pretty much everything you need to do to have a simple uh, model-based optimization. So not exactly rocket science, right? Uh, uh, this is how you can actually specify more of the, uh, the task. For example, uh, here I decided to try uh, random forests and uh, KNNs only, and uh, ask the hyperopt to uh, also use PCA as a preprocessing -proce -pre step optionally. And it will also uh, tune all the necessary hyperparameters inside uh, random forest or KNN. In AMLR MBO, Actually, the only difference between not using MBO uh, and using uh, model-based optimization is this line, the last line. You add this li last line and uh, you get all the tuning using MBO instead of, let's say, grid search or random search. Uh, how well does it work? 
Well, I, I got a you know, small case study, uh, some hard drives from some storage company, Backbase, if, if you know. They have lots of drives and would like to uh, know when they fail. Uh, so I did uh, 10 runs of random search on this data set, 10 runs of model-based op optimization. And for, for uh, random search, I got a picture like this. How to interpret it? Uh, this is uh, how good the model became after this many iterations. So, for example, uh, to get to this part of the graph, you needed to have between uh, 10 and 180, probably, uh, iterations, uh, depending on how lucky was the random search. Uh, so, in general, the lower the better. And for comparison, uh, MBO gets this way. So, pretty much, uh, MBO got it uh, quite right, got to the end of the scale uh, in five times or ten times uh, less iterations than uh, using random search. This is not an unusual result, however, it's uh, still in, uh, better than what I usually observe. Uh, I don't know actually why this, uh, this happened in, uh, so well, but you can expect the results like that too. Uh, this method has some drawbacks. Uh, building that surgery model of uh, errors takes time. Uh, if it's three of person estimators, it's usually not, not much time. If it's Gaussian processes, well, if you think SVM is slow, Gaussian processes are more, uh, even more slow, slower. Uh, less of vesperalization, I think I can uh, talked about. Uh, introduces additional complexity in the model building. Uh, if you do just uh, grid search, it's simple. It's, if you do uh, random search, it's simple to understand. Uh, this is less simple. Uh, doesn't work too well with too many hyperparameters, but actually no method uh, works too well with too many hyperparameters. As long as you do uh, gradient-less optimization, there are no, uh, no uh, golden bullets. Uh, for simple data sets, maybe not worth the, no, the effort. Uh, if you have a simple data set, you don't actually need to tune much, many hyperparameters. You can uh, usually do it manually it, and, and it will be fine. Uh, benefits, uh, you can search bigger, bigger spaces because the method is faster, uh, saves time, uh, and enables hyperparameter introspection. Uh, this is from a different project. Uh, 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 this is from a different uh, project uh, I did uh, two years ago. Uh, I had uh, several hyperparameters, of which two are uh, presented here. And uh, uh, this was done uh, using uh, Gaussian processes, so uh, you c I could actually estimate uh, how unsure was the model about the errors for those hyperparameters. And this is how, it, uh, how the hyperparameters were uh, shot at about. Uh, the place where the hyperparameters were very good were often ten tested to check new possibilities. The places where there were no, not many uh, actually uh, good hyperparameters, the model automatically ignored so that it didn't spend time to test them. And uh, there are some popular con common extensions of this, these ideas. Uh, you can search uh, hyperparameters not just by picking them at random, but by uh, looking for expected improvement. And as far as I know, this is implemented in an MLR MBO. You can actually try to make the model optimize expected improvement per second. So include the, t the time it takes to train a model uh, into the estimates so that, for example, uh, if we know that uh, this model will, be, will take more time, more troublesome hyperparameters to compute, uh, it will test it uh, rarely. Uh, include uh, uncertainty uh, in guesses. Uh, this is what I showed in the picture. Uh, in uh, iterative models like neural networks or boosting, you can actually try doing this after every iteration step, for example, after every epoch, and uh, get even better results. 
And with some, uh, some models, you can actually change hyperparameters during the learning. For example, in neural networks, some re regularization parameters or learning rate, and adjust them also using M uh, MBO, model-based optimization. I've seen some very nice papers that uh, were showing that. I haven't seen actually uh, code that would do it automatically, but I think uh, this will show up in the next year or two. And uh, back to the business impact. If we can skip uh, time ne necessary to just compute uh, models that are weak, uh, we can uh, upgrade our models, for example, uh, use the models that we would usually use for longer estimates for real-time analytics, uh, which means that we save lots of time of, uh, of uh, people who do analytics, and this time it's expensive, right? Uh, so, using good tools and hyperparameter optimization is a good tool, uh, it's useful. Not, not just in business, actually. I, I, I did it in, uh, in science, and uh, it was even better, I think. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions to our planets? Yes. Uh, is there any way to insert like human knowledge inside hyperparameter. Okay. Can you give an example of this? Uh, well, the uh, best thing that comes to mind is that you can like, you know that some phrase of uh, hyperparameters won't bring you good results because, because let's say, uh, the, data, uh, the data set doesn't have complex, uh, complex interactions, so uh, you know that, uh, let's say, you don't, have, you don't need uh, very, deep, uh, very deep trees. You can uh, just uh, tell the model to, uh, for example, test them less or uh, put some priors on the hyperparameter space. In Gaussian processes, this is easy. Uh, in uh, tree of parts and estimators, you can also you know, put some uh, probabilities on the initial space. This is a very nice idea. Have you tried combining this technique with stacking models? But you are Planto, you see something like you think that this is a good idea or not? So there are some problems when going up to XGBoost helps. There are some problems when going from default parameters in XGBoost to optimize hyperparameters helps a lot. And this was an example of a pretty hard problem with data being maybe not a data frame, but time series close that can be transformed in a data frame. So this was a pretty hard problem comparing to the rest of uh, real world problems we work on. Uh, answer a different question from a different uh, perspective. Uh, you could add a switch like use stacking or not use stack stacking as a hyperparameter to this framework, and it would work. It would work. I, I think I would say uh, you would get a nice uh, idea uh, how your model of errors. Uh, what does it think about stacking? Whether it's good or not. Not to XGBoost, but to a framework that does model-based optimization. Exactly as with PCA, on or off. So, from your from your experience, how good is this method in avoiding local minima in this hyperspace? Yeah. 
Okay, and have you heard about particle swarm optimization? Okay, thank you. Okay, so any other questions? So thank you very much.